in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you're welcome to another spirit filled message on fifty centric message if you're new to this channel I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted unto you and then God is going to visit you your home thank you for watching be blessed I made up my mind that I will learn the truths of the kingdom that will grant me the wisdom and you see let me tell you this when it has to do with the mysteries of the kingdom they are able to deliver to you your inheritance in Christ here's what the Bible says Acts chapter 20 and verse 32 it says and now brethren I commend you to God and to the word of his grace the Bible says it is able to build you up and then number two it is able to deliver to you an inheritance among them that are sanctified that means you are a man of God here and God has destined for you that through your life there will be revival in Gombe through your life God will come and bless and lift the youth you will be surprised old age can catch up with you and you can pass on to glory and not even save on to up to 100 people because there is a mystery you have ignored can I tell you this when I was starting ministry or when I began my work with God because of the nature of how God visited us those days on campus it was a marvelous move of God our focus was just on prayer and all of this but a time came when I had an encounter and this was when God began to teach me this and say son I'm taking you far there are many other things you need to learn. I remember there were many people those days on campus. I called their attention lovingly. And I said, gentlemen, we have submitted ourselves. We have built capacity in prayer. But the Lord is telling me there are other dimensions we have neglected. And if we don't pay attention to them, they will affect us in the future. Because what we don't take out the time to learn. I tell you sincerely, and I don't say it to be sarcastic. Some of these people are not even in ministry today. Because the areas they neglected, Satan used it to destroy them. Imagine that as I've come here right now, I don't have food to eat and my family is not in place because I, I, I ignored learning the mystery that controls economic empowerment. Now that the prophetic is upon my life, do you know chances are excellent that I would deviate into error because of hunger? Because I ignored understanding the financial principles of the kingdom. For instance, I can be a sincere man of God. But when you see your loved ones crying, you wouldn't know when you would do something you never believed you, you could do. That's what you see. You see a lot of people who started well. As at the time the man started pursuing the Lord, he was maybe a young boy in primary school or secondary school or maybe in college somewhere. Now he's married with four children responsibilities have come and you will find out that compromises begin to come because the day you watch your wife and your children cry and say man of God I know you are a prophet but we are hungry something is wrong the troubles and the battle you are watching your children about to die and you don't have the money for a simple medical thing now you have the prophetic you will come to our dear politicians the devil will deceive you into coming to meet them and say ah her excellency is here why don't you use this prophetic and do something and get 500,000 out are you seeing that this is what has birthed a lot of compromises hear what I'm telling you if you want to last embrace the whole counsel of God if you ignore any area that area you ignore will be the strength of Satan in your life tomorrow when it is time to pray and fast, pray and fast like everything depends on it. When it is time to access the wisdom of God. And you see, 
You can pray immediately, but you are not transformed immediately. Transformation takes a long time. Is why a lot of believers, the Bible says in the latter days, they will not endure sound doctrine. It takes stamina to sit down and learn the ways of God. It's why many young people will want to go into ministry. The moment they pray a little revelation here and there, somebody is shouting in their meeting, they are set for ministry. And they fire like ignorant foxes into a forest and they find out that in two weeks they preach all the messages they have and now they are wondering what in the world do i do because you see when you start the prayer group the 10 people with you are all sincere people but by the time they become 100 thieves have come wicked people have come witches and wizards have joined the church now you need the wisdom of god but because you didn't pay attention to it you keep praying until they steal all your money until the witches and wizards destroy you and neglecting the whole counsel of God I hope you are learning I'm not just being sarcastic and there is no tell them here God is speaking to everybody are we together the first crusade that we ever had that I had as a man of God it was we were not many in the crusade ground in all honesty I'm not sure we we're more than 50 but it was a powerful crusade the sick were healed many things happened but can i tell you the truth i did not understand the principles of influence to be able to make an intelligent publicity i did the best that we could do with what i thought was my knowledge we prayed and fasted as if i would not even see again the few people that came were healed and it was a great start but not much could be done and now we hired sound from Kaduna and after they finished the crusade it was time for the bills now I stood there frustrated I'm, I'm see, I quoted scripture these guys were going to embarrass me I said I'm not a thief I fear God will I come and preach and you know when you are preaching in a crusade ground you are shouting about the God of all possibilities and the sound people you are owing are listening to you while you are preaching they are waiting for the, the crusade and the sick are healed and everybody would have gone and I stood there I had to liaise with the drivers I said take my people back to Zaria by the time you get to Zaria that the transport money will be there and I said God this can't be it no there's something about you I take responsibility there is something I do not know there's no point arguing you are God you are God all by yourself you see let me tell you if you want to see all of God take responsibility early stop blaming people and blaming this and say there is something I do not know period the more you are humble and meek the word of God can come to you and it was after that encounter I went back and God began to open to me when you read the Bible it says add to your faith this add to this this add to this this it makes you complete and I learned that principle I said father I don't want to be the man of God who will come and manipulate people tomorrow I have a covenant with God that I will do ministry with integrity I don't want a situation where I see politicians and see people or our dear men and women of God imagine that out of my pain now I'm looking for say one million naira. I will now prophesy to you and I will say look I know what is in your account and I'm not lying I will abuse the prophetic because of hunger can I tell you even if you are a prophet when there is no food you will die Genesis 42 from verse 1 and 2 let the Bible speak I'm not just talking about financial issues I am saying our gospel must be holistic to affect both the hearts of men and the strata of society now Jacob saw that there was corn in Egypt. Is it there in your Bible? Jacob said to his sons, Why do ye look upon one another? Please read verse 2 if you are a Christian. One, two, read. And he said, Behold, I have heard that there is corn in Egypt. Get you down hither and buy for us from thence that we may live. Even a prophet will die when there is no corn can I tell you there is only one reason God's covenant people go to Egypt hunger 
hunger can take a believer from the place of integrity to a place of bondage hunger can literally take even the child of a prophet to egypt how did they become slaves in egypt it was hunger that took them there let's be careful so that our children will not renounce the faith on their way to egypt because of hunger let's be careful so that we don't put pressure on men of god to begin to compromise because of bills and trouble let's be careful so we don't begin to double christianity and witchcraft all in a blind search for results you can embrace the whole counsel of god and become a person of dexterity and balance blessed in every area can i tell you god can visit you in every area and give you rest roundabout you become a better portrait of what he can do genesis 24 1. we'll soon pray now show us the ancient path will you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the ways of jesus we want to enter your rest and abraham please keep it there was old and well stricken in age and the lord had blessed him in all things how many things man of god god can bless you in every area now let me tell you this you are here and you are not given to the ministry of prayer with fasting there is a dimension of discernment and growth that you can never have no matter you can quote scriptures and just flatter yourself and the power of performance will not be there it is in the place of prayer that you build discernment it is in the place of prayer that you build the capacity to endure the days that come when people begin to criticize you by reason of the anointing you carry have you built the stamina to endure and still love that is the ministry of prayer the, the primary assignment of prayer is not for petitions, it's for your growth and transformation. By the time the powers of darkness mandated by Satan to attack your integrity, whether you are in ministry, whether you are in politics, I hope you know that the moment you declare that you are standing for Jesus and becoming a light, you have drawn a line between you and the devil. It's not until you are a preacher anyone at all who will name the name of christ i assure you satan will come after you it will take stamina and capacity if jesus did not pray and fast for that long he may not be able to do well with it is written the force that powered it is written was derived in the place of prayer through testimony listen carefully in 2009 or 2010 I had a vision and the Lord told me I was trusting God for direction for the next 10 years or thereabout of my life. Listen, we're about to pray. And at that time, for many of you, there are many fathers here who will tell you, the media ministry was the major way that God will use, you know, CD sales of CDs and the rest to be able to generate income for ministry. And, you know, I was just trying to say, Lord, I'm now rising to a point where demands are coming what is the blueprint? I want to walk with integrity. It was in the place of prayer that the Lord gave me a revelation and said, you will not sell any CD or anything. He said in the future, CDs will not, people will almost not buy it again because technology will change the narrative. He said, take the audio of your message and put it online. My angel will take it to the nations. That is how I will announce you. Listen carefully. This came from the place of prayer. Now, you rewind to that time. It didn't make sense. Because that time, you, you put your message online, you are wasting your time. What are you doing there? But the foolishness that comes from discernment through prayer. That simple instruction in obedience to God is what has helped to do what God has done in the life of this man standing before. Prayer will help you know what the next 10 years will be like. And you can go ahead. Listen. When Jesus was praying, 
the Bible says the disciples started their journey. Remember, when it was done, they were praying and they entered the boat and they started moving. They were six hours ahead of Jesus, but he was praying. But the moment he was done praying, he got up and walked on water. Prayer can give you an advantage. You can redeem time in prayer. Prayer can give you the result of 10 years and bring it in one year. They were using a boat six hours away ahead of Jesus. You would call Jesus' prayer life a delay and a waste of time. But he got up from that prayer ministry with the empowerment to walk on water. And he walked on water. Within a short time, he had caught up with them. They looked at him and they thought he was a ghost. And you know, Peter said, if it be thou, bid me come. And he said, come. And even Peter walked on water. Your prayer life can even make others benefit. That it was on account of that strength he could say, let me help you too. You can walk on water. Ladies and gentlemen, if you choose prayer and you neglect the word, there will be a striking imbalance in your life. Your life will not be a fair capture of the portrait of a true believer in Christ. And if you choose the word of God and ignore prayer, you will only be filled with dogmas and philosophies that will frustrate you. For such people, the Bible says, ever learning and yet never coming to the knowledge of the truth. Anything they say, you say, I know. John chapter, you will help the preacher finish the verse, but there are no results in your life. The tree can be green. Leaves. You will attract people to come who are hungry, but you will not be able to feed them and help them. Why have you come here tonight? To reignite that fire and that appetite. For some of you, you have come here tonight to repent from laughing at people who are given to the ministry of prayer and you laugh at them and say they will suffer. We are just focusing on the word. You are making a mistake. And God is calling many of you who have become arrogant because of the place of prayer and the prophetic and the apostolic to tell you, hey, all this your pastors and reverend you are insulting and saying they don't see anything. Many, many years when you are down, they will still be standing because the word of God will keep them standing. When the revival of the 60s and 70s broke out in America with Papa Hagen and all of these men, he was not the only one who caught that fire. There were many, but some ignored the word. They enjoyed the ministry of the Holy Spirit and were, they were just doing their things. Papa Hagen warned them and said, you people are building on sand. You are not building on the rock. They ignored him. Many of them fell like a pack of cards. And he said, many years I will still be standing. He embraced the ministry of the spirit and prayer. He, expect, he embraced the ministry of the word. And today when you talk about those revivals, that is the name that captures that move of God. So that a time will not come when we are talking about the history of the move of God in Bombay who say from this year to this year there were some young men who were on fire praying and working miracles but they just went down all of them one by one you've seen this happen with people people come balloon success they arrive some of them on campus some of them everywhere on fire for five years ten years praying it's as if they are ghosts they can fast for one year but after six seven years because they do not have a word bank when the vicissitudes of life eat at them. I have met a few people that I used to know on campus. I don't say this with joy in my heart, but I've met some of them. Some of them, you would believe that with the zeal they were carrying, as far as prayer and the charismatic move of God was concerned, honestly, you would think by now, they should even be maybe a global ministry. And some of them, I've met them, and I look at them looking so wretched, and some of them, you know that they are not even serious with God again. What happened? The one that strike me most as we prepare to pray. True story. A gentleman once upon a time, many years ago, this gentleman was even ordained a pastor. I had warned him one time. I said, the way you are ignoring the ministry of the word and the whole counsel of God, it will affect you. Ignored me. Eventually, the gentleman traveled abroad just to go and further his studies. He returned back a few years, maybe like four or so years ago, to come and renew his papers. Guess what? He had become an atheist. 
this was a young boy that was getting people filled with the Holy Ghost and he just laughed he said Africa is our poverty and suffering that is making us do all these gym gym things I said my God what is this these were people who would roll inside the rain and say Lord use me I found that I would listen if you don't embrace the whole counsel of God let your life be an inspiration not a lesson not a lesson for people Many, many, many great people have risen just like you. Many preachers. I assure you, you are not the first man of God to begin to have encounters. You are not the first to see Jesus. You are not the first that the power of God is already moving. Ask our fathers of faith here. They will tell you stories of people who have risen and sadly some have fallen. But there were others who looked like they would not stand. They built with the simplicity of the word and prayer. And when all the dust settles, they are still standing. There are kings, there are kingdoms, there are mountains and there are thrones, but only a sure will reign forever. To his kingdom there'll be no end. There are thrones, there are kingdoms, there are mountains and there are thrones, but only a shoe will reign forever. To his kingdom there'll be no end. There are names. There are titles, there are legends and tales of strength, but only a shoe will reign forever. To his kingdom there'll be no end. There are names, there are titles. There are legends and tales of strength, but only a shoe will reign forever. To his kingdom there'll be no end. Gombe, hear this preacher. Men have risen and men have gone down. Governments have risen and governments have gone down. Men of God have risen. Some have gone to join the cloud of witnesses. But I tell you, if you build on the ministry of prayer and you build on the ministry of the word, you have the tribe, the twin pillar that you can hold on. And when the dust comes and when the winds blow, you will still be standing. The word and prayer. Let's find a place to pray. Acts chapter 6 again. But we will give ourselves continually. Gombe, give yourselves continually. When it is time for Bible study and the learning of doctrine, do not ignore it. Sit down and camp with the word. Go and buy books. Go and listen to materials. Don't say I'm a prayer warrior. I'm seeing visions. Settle down and learn doctrine. Learn the ways of God. Learn about financial prosperity. Learn about discipline and moral excellence. Learn about character. Learn about leadership. Learn about administration. Don't ignore any dimension. Embrace the whole counsel of God. And then garnish it with a life of prayer. Pray in the morning. Pray in the afternoon. Pray in the night. Pray with fasting. And you will evolve into a sign and a wonder. That is God's pattern. Can I tell you this? This is what you must do if you want to see the glory of God manifest in your life. We are going to pray. Our first prayer point is found in Leviticus chapter 9 and verse 6. There are names, there are titles, there are legends 
and tales of strength But only a shoe will reign forever To his kingdom there'll be no end And Moses said This is the thing which the Lord commanded that he should do and the glory of the Lord shall appear unto you if you want to see the glory of the Lord upon your life there is what you must do and this is the mystery I've revealed to you tonight you want to see the glory of the Lord in your finances you want to see the glory of the Lord in ministry give yourself continually to the ministry of prayer and the ministry of the word are there people of prayer in this place? Can we take the next five minutes to pray? Wherever you are, I want you to commit, engage with understanding. Pray in the spirit, pray your understanding. Where are the watchmen? Now is your time to pray. Lift your voice and pray. I obtain grace. Now that you know these things, Happy are you if you do them. Lord, the grace to submit myself continually to the ministry of prayer. The grace to submit myself to the ministry of the word. Someone pray. Challenge prayerlessness. Challenge wordlessness obtain grace from God some of you have ignored prayer meetings you have ignored prayer ministries it's time to realign some of you have ignored platforms for the communication of sound doctrine it's time to realign please pray you are praying for Gombe. You are praying for your children. You are praying for the government. You are praying for the men and the women of God. You are praying for the purposes of God. You are praying for your campuses. Let your kingdom come. This is what the Lord commands that you do. And the glory of the Lord shall appear unto you. Hallelujah. 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 Let me show you one of the major ministries of prayer is the ministry of prophetic intercession. Listen carefully. The ability to stand in partnership with heaven and shift climates over territories. Isaiah 62. Help those under the anointing. Isaiah 62. Please give it to us. We're wrapping up. Hear me, Gombe. If you sit down and just say government will change this land business people will change this land you will sit down and nothing will change there is the ministry of prophetic intercession through prayer over families over the government over territories let me show you a scripture we're wrapping up for Zion's sake I will not hold my peace and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest until the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness and the salvation thereof as a lamb that burneth verse 2 the gentiles shall see your righteousness gombe and all kings thy glory gombe thou shalt be called by a new name and the mouth of the lord which the mouth of the lord shall name verse 3 thou shalt be a crown of glory in the hand of the lord and a royal diadem in the hand of thy God. These are all the things that God wants to do. Thou shalt no more be termed forsaken. 
neither shall thy land become desolate but thou shalt be called Hephziba and thy land Beulah for the Lord delighted in thee and thy land shall be married now how will this come to pass next verse it says for as a young man married a virgin so shall thy sons marry thee and as the bridegroom rejoiceth over the bride so shall thy God rejoice over thee verse 6 this is why it will come to pass I have set watchmen upon your walls O Gombe which shall never hold their peace day or night ye that make mention of the Lord he said keep not silent verse 7 and give him no rest until prophecy becomes manifestation that means engage in prayer every family must become an altar of prayer the campus must become an altar of prayer in addition to a learning institution every church must be an altar of prayer your government houses must be altars of prayer give him no rest bring before him the prophetic word lord you have said this concerning gombe that you are the jewel in the savannah we decree and declare it must be so give him no rest listen please look up i can tell you that prayer if and when done with understanding can change the narrative over a life and over a family there was a man in the bible called jabez are we bible students the bible says the mother named him jabez because she bore him in sorrow this guy saw a pattern of negative things following his life but he got to a point where he prayed he said oh that thou wouldest bless me is someone ready to pray you are going to declare lord your prophetic word over my life in this season i enforce his manifestation by prayer open your mouth and pray i enforce prophecy over my church over the government over my campus over my family someone pray someone pray someone pray we enforce prophecy violence shall no longer be heard in our land or the sound of mourning we declare this by the decree of the watchers. Pray. Let your kingdom come, O oh God, in my family. Let your kingdom come in every church. Let your kingdom come over this beautiful land of Gombe. ignite the fire of revival from the north to the south to the east to the west every campus every home the fire of revival blazing from north to south blazing from east to west of this land until the name of Jesus is lifted above every other name hallelujah 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 you are praying because you believe in Jesus can I tell you it is the season where women of prayer prophetic intercessors you need to rise in this land the time of sleeping and giving flimsy excuses is over it's time he said awake thou that sleepest man of god it's time to stop giving excuses it's time to know how to hold on to the four horns of the altar and pray prophecy to manifestation teach the young people how to pray pastors teach your members how to pray businessmen pray politicians pray students 
pray lecturers pray academicians pray members of the force pray he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray In the name of Jesus the last prayer point and then I speak over your life and we're done for tonight please listen the last prayer point Proverbs chapter 8 is our next and last prayer point Proverbs chapter 8 from verse 1 media help us please Proverbs chapter 8 Doth not wisdom cry and understanding put forth her voice she standeth in the top of the high places by the way of the places of the paths wisdom now she cried at the gates at the entry of the city who is crying wisdom at the coming in at the doors unto you O men I call and my voice is to the sons of man. O oh, ye simple, understand wisdom. And ye fools, be of an understanding heart. Verse 6. Hear, for I will speak of excellent things. And the opening of my lips shall be right things. Verse 7. For my mouth shall speak truth. And wickedness is an abomination to my lips. Verse 8. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness and nothing is forward or perverse in them. They are all plain to him that understandeth and right to them that find knowledge. Verse 10. Receive my instruction and not silver and knowledge rather than fine gold. For wisdom is better than rubies. And all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. God is taking us somewhere. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence and find out the knowledge of witty inventions. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy, and the evil way and the forward mouth do I hate. 14. Counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding and I have strength. 15. Now, wisdom is speaking. By me, kings reign. And princes decree justice. By me, princes rule and nobles, even the judges of all the earth. 17. I love them that love me and those that seek me early shall find me are you ready to pray father the mystery that connects what i do not know but i need in my life grant me access to it even by your wisdom go ahead and pray the things i need in my life that i do not know how to obtain may wisdom come for me the wisdom to be empowered financially the wisdom to live and walk in health the wisdom to have a robust ministry the wisdom to lead as a politician the wisdom to establish the counsel of God in my territory I obtain by faith pray the wisdom to be a responsible father the wisdom to be a responsible husband the wisdom to be a responsible wife and mother the wisdom to be an exceptional man of God the wisdom to be an exceptional leader by me kings reign and princes rule In the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ 
2 Corinthians 1 24. I'm speaking over your life now. Is it 124? Help me. First Corinthians 1 24. But unto them which are called, we are called in Christ, all of us, with no exception. Please look at me. No matter what background you are coming from, some of you may be coming from families where there's no electricity. Some of you may be coming from a background where nobody has risen. Can I tell you, you are still called. Some of you may have failed, failed as men of God, failed as sincere people some of you you are standing looking at me right now and you are at your wit's end you are saying i'm tired this thing is not working i'm not getting something right you are correct something must be missing christ when the anointing is revealed it comes to you as the power of god and it comes to you as the wisdom you want to access the anointing as the power of God. The ministry of prayer is responsible for drawing that dimension of the anointing. Do not this. You want to access the wisdom of God. The power that comes from the wisdom of God will come, or the power that translates to the wisdom of God comes from his word. Habakkuk chapter 3 from verse 3 and 4. That is where you get the power that comes from his word. The power that gives you authority. God came from Taman and the Holy One from Mount Paran. His glory covered the heavens and the earth was full of his praises. Verse 4. Amplified puts it very beautifully verse 4. It says, and his brightness was like the sunlight rays streamed from his hands and there in the sunlight splendor was the hiding place of his power there is a dimension of god's power that hides in his light when you access his light you access the power that translates as the wisdom of god christ revealed as the power of god Christ revealed as the wisdom of God. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. Can I pray for you? I have you am exalted like the whole With fresh oil, my head you have exalted like the horn of a unicorn. I am anointed with fresh oil. Now, as I pray, please do well to help those under the anointing. You don't have to bring them out, just receive. In the name of Jesus Christ. The anointing that fans back a man's prayer altar. The grace for supplication. And prayer. I stretch my hands. It will come on everybody. Oh, but there are a few people that this mantle and this grace... This grace of a watchman, right now, may that anointing fall on you. Take that grace now. Receive that grace in the name of Jesus Christ. Men and women of prayer, I prophesy to you, arise by the Spirit. There are many women from tonight. That mantle is coming upon you. 
the mantle that was upon Anna the prophetess that grants you capacity to pray help them please take that grace now in the name of Jesus There are people the fire upon your altar has gone down it was not like this this was not how you started with god right now i ignite that altar let fresh fire may that altar catch fire now and begin to burn in the name of jesus The Bible says all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made I want to pray for you the fire of God is coming on this woman I don't know who she is this woman wearing a shiny robe madam look at me I stretch my hands that anointing now take that grace now the name of Jesus Christ you will never never be the same I ignite you that fire the grace of an intercessor indeed you will pray gentleman wearing green what do you do are you a pastor where your own church I don't know who he is but grace for you to do ministry with integrity but I'm going to pray for you stand up there is an anointing that is coming upon you the grace for a teacher and the grace for a revelation I stretch my hands upon you right now. Take that grace now. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will never, never be the same. I release that grace upon you by the power that raised Christ from the dead. Now, I'm seeing something. That gentleman waving his hands, lifting his hands up, this one, and the three people by your left and the white person by your right, all of you come out. I saw something in the spirit. I don't know if they are a group. But come, please allow them come. I want to pray for you. Don't come out carelessly. Listen, I don't know who you are. I just saw light across four of you. Lift your hands. I want to pray for you. May you do ministry with integrity. May you love the Lord with all your heart. I stretch my hands. Take this fire now. In the name of Jesus Christ, receive that anointing right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. You will never be the same. Never be the same. Let it be a new season for you. A new season of revival. A new season of empowerment. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let me declare the grace for favor. There is such an anointing for the favor of God. Don't reject it. Favor will give you an edge in life and give you the time to seek God and serve him acceptably. I stretch my hands right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. There are two of you among these people standing at the choir. I just saw light. There are two of you. There's a strong anointing right now. That grace is coming upon you. Two of them. Please help them. Take that grace now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lift your hands. I decree and I declare by the power that raised Christ from the dead, may this grace for favor rest upon you now. 
in the name of Jesus Christ I shift systems and structures for your sake by the road of the apostolic and the prophetic I shift you to a new season in the name of Jesus Christ dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the face of development lord grant me the discipline